Welcome back. Today we will finish our chapter on multiplication, looking at multiplication mental math. So like before, we will look at calculation techniques and estimation techniques. And the very first calculation technique I want to talk about is the one-digit facts. It's not really a technique so much as it is a chance for me to emphasize how important it is to know your one-digit facts. 5 times 7 is 35, 8 times 9 equals 72, and all the others. When I think about one-digit facts, I often sadly remember this kid that I was tutoring. Uh, he was a junior high student, and he was in algebra, and he was struggling with algebra, and I was there to help him. And uh, it became clear after a few minutes of tutoring that he did not know his one-digit multiplication. And that just made algebra so difficult. I, I felt bad. I, you know, I felt terrible for this kid. Um, he just was not going to do well in algebra if he didn't know his fundamental one-digit facts. So the one-digit facts, these are the foundation of everything. You've got to know these things. So when you are teachers, if you are teaching your uh, one-digit facts, make sure the kids know them. All right, moving on. Compatible numbers. We've seen the idea of compatible numbers in the past. Sometimes if I have three or more numbers that are being uh, put together, in this case with multiplication, I look for two of them that work together nicely. So with multiplication, 5 and 2 work together very nicely. Let's multiply those two first. That gives me 10 with 13 left over, and the answer 130. How about the next problem? What two numbers do I want to multiply first? Yes, that's right, the 4 and the 5. So that gives us 9 times 20, which is 18. Stick on the 0, 180. So if you are multiplying three or more numbers together, look for the compatible numbers. Our third technique is break apart. So let's take the 4 times 123. And I'm writing things down, but this is sort of how you would think about it in your mind, right? You think 123 is 120 and 3. You are breaking that apart. And then the 4 multiplies with each of those. So 400. 80, 12, and now you need to add them together. So you're keeping all this in your head. You probably, the next thing, 400 is easy to remember. You probably are adding the 80 and the 12 in your head, so you're thinking that's 92. And so then 400 plus 92, 492 as your answer. There are other ways to break apart. It's a really good idea. You could also think about this as four times, and let's break this off as 100 plus 23. So again, you probably think to yourself, 400, that's easy to remember. And then in your mind, you're trying to multiply four times 23. And maybe you do another break apart, the 20 and the 3. But one way or the other, maybe you know 4 times 23, you get 92. And so we can add 40, uh, 400 plus 92, 492. Now, I will tell you, honestly, the way I thought about this problem the very first time I saw it, for me, I was thinking immediately 120 plus 3, because 12 isn't too bad. I know 4 times 12, that's 48. So I was thinking in my mind 480 plus another 12. So 480 plus 12 is 92, 492 for my answer. So definitely with break apart, one problem, but many different ways that you can approach it, many different ways to break apart. There's no one right answer. It's just whatever works best for you. Compensation. Now, there are two kinds of compensation, additive and multiplicative. We'll start with the additive compensation. Let's say that one of the numbers we want to multiply is just under something nice. 99 is just under 100, which is nice. So I will add 1 to 99 to get 100. And now when I do my multiplication, 100 times 4 equals 400. But here's where the compensation part comes in. I know that I over multiplied, so now I need to compensate by subtracting something. How much do I subtract? Here's how we think about it. The conversion was changing the 99 into 100. I added 1. But that adding 1 was compounded 4 times. So in effect, my answer is four, uh, is 4 too big. So I need to subtract 4 to get the proper answer, 396. What about the next problem? 
59 times 7. 59 is very close. I can just add 1 to get a 60. And 60 times 7 is pretty easy. 6 times 7 is 42. 420. But how much do I need to subtract? I've over multiplied. So I added 1 to get the nice number. But that, that adding 1 was magnified 7 times. So I need to subtract off 7 in this case. 413. Last example, uh, 58 times 3. Now I'm not, I'm not right up against 60. I need to add 2 to get 60. But when I multiply times 3, I get 180. How much do I need to subtract now? Well, I added 2 to get the nice number. And that error of 2 was magnified 3 times. So I'm off by 6. So I need to subtract 6 to get the right answer. 180 minus 6, 174. All right, so additive compensation, it's a nice trick. How about multiplicative compensation? In this case, I'm going to multiply one number by something and divide the other number uh, by that same thing. So for example, five and 14, let's take the five and multiply by two to get 10. Take the 14, divide by two to get seven. This is an easier problem. It's easier because I'd, I'd rather multiply by 10 than multiply by uh, five. This very often happens with multiplicative compensation. One number I will double, and the other number I will have. So doubling the 5 gives me 10, having the 14 gives me 7, and that's an easier multiplication problem. How about 4 times 17? Doubling isn't too bad, so I can, I can have the 4, give me 2, times this becomes 34. And now 2 times 34 is something I can figure out 68. Sometimes this halving and doubling process has to go on a couple times. 8 times 13, 4 times 26, which is the same as 2 times 52, and that gives me 104. So multiplicative compensation is very often seen as doubling one factor and halving the other. I suppose you could also do it with threes you know, taking one, dividing by three, and taking the other number, multiplying by three, but that just doesn't happen so often. Moving on to estimation techniques. So round to the first digit. Always a nice, straightforward trick. Uh, take the 81, turn it into 80. Take the 59, that becomes 60. Eight times six, 48. I've got two zeros. There's my answer. So not much to this. Uh, always a nice, simple estimation technique to use. Sometimes rounding to the first digit doesn't give you quite as good as you could do. Uh, let's do this the old way. Let's do this with rounding to the first digit. I would get 300 times 40. 3 times 4 is 12, 0, 0, 0. 12,000 is my estimate. But maybe you notice there is a better way to multiply. What if instead I made this 250 times 40. So it's not rounding to the first digit, but it's rounding to a 25 because 25 times 4 is really easy. 25 times 4, these are compatible numbers with multiplication. That's 100 followed by two zeros, and so 10,000. So 10,000 is my better estimate for that. All right, that is your quick run through calculation techniques and estimation techniques with mental math. Give these problems a try and uh, do the homework and submit online. I've really enjoyed seeing everybody's work. It's I'm, I am impressed, I'll tell you honestly. Keep up the good work. I really enjoy seeing your, uh, your creative ways of approaching problems and the, the thoroughness with which you've been uh, tackling these homework sets. I really appreciate it. So keep up the great work and ask if you have questions.